Hello and welcome to the Architecting Microsoft Azure Solutions Exam 70-534 prep course. This course is designed to prepare you for Exam 70-534. That exam isn't like most technical certification exams. Yes, you will need to know how Azure works, how to configure its various services, and the capabilities of each service tier, but 70-534 doesn't focus on rote knowledge. That is, on another exam, it might be important to know that a virtual hard drive can't be larger than one terabyte. You'll need to know that for 70-534 too. But you won't be asked, point blank, by the 70-534 exam, what the size limit is for a virtual hard drive. Instead, you'll be presented with a theoretical company. A business need of that company, say the need to store various product review documents, will be presented to you as a case study. This case study will present you with certain business needs. For example, do partner companies need to access these reviews? If so, are there restrictions on who can see them and from where? Are there compliance issues that require extra data security? And so forth. You'll also be presented with technical requirements. Is there a need to connect an on-premises data center to this solution? Is there a corporate identity provider, such as an on-site active directory, that needs to be the master source for authentication? And so on. Exam 70-534 will test your ability to, to determine which Azure services to use, what service tiers should be chosen for those services, and how to configure them so that the end solution meets the business needs and the technical needs noted in the case study. So the focus of this course, like the focus of the exam itself, is less nuts and bolts and more connect the dots. Again, you do need to understand how Azure services work and their limitations in order to pass 70-534, but the focus won't be on how to configure services as much as what to configure. To help with that goal, the exercises in this course will be a little different too. Each set of questions will be related to a case study document, which you'll need to download and refer to in order to answer those questions. We'll have note cards in a study guide, but if you want to score well on exam 70-534, it will be most important to learn how to read and follow case studies. So, a little about me, your course instructor. My name is Doug Vanderweide, and I'm a Microsoft Certified Solutions Developer, Azure Solutions Architect. Because that certification will eventually be retired, Microsoft has also named me a Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, Cloud Platform and Infrastructure. That's the certification most Azure professionals will earn going forward. I'm also a CompTIA CTT Plus Certified Technical Trainer. I have 20 plus years of experience in IT, most of it as a hands-on developer in the .NET and LAMP web stack. I pretty much conducted my own DevOps that entire time, so I'm also familiar with servers, networking, and the like. I've been working with Azure for a little more than four years. Let's take a moment to talk about this course and its requirements. This is an advanced course, and arguably, Exam 70-534 is the more difficult of the three certification exams. Again, because it's less, how do you do this, and more, why do you do this? Therefore, you're going to need a strong understanding of the services Azure offers, what they are, and how they work. To that end, you should probably start with Exam 70-533 and Exam 70-532 prep courses before taking on this course. Those courses are designed to address all the major Azure service areas, compute, including virtual machines and web apps, networking, Active Directory, identity management, storage, and ARM templates, and so on. Without understanding how those services work, you won't be able to understand the questions posed in Exam 70-534. So start there. For most students, I think it makes sense to take Exam 70-533 first, then Exam 70-532, which builds upon the knowledge tested in 70-533, and to finish with 70-534, which is very different from the other two exams. You should also take the introductory course on PowerShell before beginning this course. In all three certification exams, PowerShell is used extensively. It is arguably used the least in exam 70-534, but there will be PowerShell on this exam, and you will need to understand the basic structure of several Azure RM commandlets. This course will have several demos. If you'd like to replicate them yourself, you'll need an Azure account, PowerShell in the Azure Resource Manager module, 
the Azure Command Line Interface, and Visual Studio Code. Azure accounts are free, but it does cost money to actually use Azure services. We're working on incorporating Azure Labs into your Linux Academy subscription, but for now, if you'd like to follow along, you'll need your own Azure subscription, and the services you create on that subscription will be billed separately, directly by Microsoft. The good news is there are a few ways you can get enough credits to experiment with Azure at no cost. The first option is to sign up for a new Azure account. When you do, you'll be granted $200 in credit. That should be enough to pay for the services you'll need to duplicate the demos shown in this course, but you'll need to be careful. It will be very important to only create resources as you need them and destroy those resources as soon as you're done, since Azure charges you for every hour most services are provisioned, even if you're not actually using them. If you already have an Azure account, but you've not signed up for Visual Studio Dev Essentials, that free program will give you a $25 monthly Azure credit for 12 months. Again, if you're careful about deprovisioning services as soon as possible, that should be enough money to follow along here. If you maintain a startup company, Microsoft's BizSpark program will give you up to $150 per month in Azure credits for up to several years, depending on your product and the progress of your business. BizSpark requires you to apply directly with Microsoft and to be approved for the program. Finally, if you're a student at a university or a school that has a Microsoft partnership, there's a very good chance you can either use your school's account to access Azure services or be granted Azure credits. Check with your Microsoft partnership coordinator, which is usually in the school's IT department, bookstore, or computer science department. Obtaining PowerShell is done directly from its GitHub repository at the link you see here. There are clients for Windows, Ubuntu, CentOS, Mac OS, and Docker. Once you have PowerShell installed, you'll also need the Azure Resource Manager module for PowerShell. This can be obtained for Windows directly from PowerShell by running the Install Module Azure RM commandlet. At this time, a technical issue with the .NET Core prevents you from downloading the entire Azure RM module for Mac and Linux. Instead, you'll need to download specific packages. Follow the instructions at this link to learn more. The Azure command line interface is available via npm by running the command sudo npm install g azure cli. Note that you may not actually have to use sudo to command, run this command. For Windows, Mac OS, and Docker, you can download installers directly from GitHub at the provided link. You can also get Linux tarballs there if you prefer to install that way. Visual Studio Code is available at the link shown here. It comes in Debian and Red Hat based versions for Linux, plus Mac OS and Windows. A link to Visual Studio Dev Essentials is also provided here, and it not only gives you those Azure credits we were talking about earlier, but also has loads of other free goodies. It's definitely worth checking out. Finally, I'd like to review the features of the Linux Academy that set us apart. These include the ability to create a course schedule that fits into your busy life, downloadable content, Note cards, our second and none community of students, instructors, and support staff, and your support options for when you need that extra bit of help. Check out the demo video, which follows this one, for more information. And that's your welcome. When you're ready, let's move on to the next lesson.